Ladies and gentlemen, fight fans all around the world, let's talk some boxing. All credit and thanks to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Without him, I wouldn't be able to do these videos that I'm doing to you guys so that you enjoy today. We're going to look at undefeated super featherweight world champions. That means once they were in the division of super featherweight, they were undefeated and then they became world champions and they were undefeated and they moved up probably to another division or they ended their careers, okay? At Super Featherweight. Let's start off with one of the characters that people don't know. I mean, they don't know his history, really. Robert the Ghost Guerrero. Robert the Ghost Guerrero was a multiple weight world champion, okay? And one of the weight classes that he was world champion in was actually Super Featherweight, even though his career at Super Featherweight was rather short. It spanned four fights. It started with Ido Ruiz in 2009, and it ended with Malcolm Klassen in 2009, the very same year. He fought about four times that year. Now, what's interesting is this. Most people don't know any of these fighters because they're not really well-known or great fighters in any way, shape, or form. But Malcolm Klassen was a world champion, the IBF world champion, the fight before he faced and tried to defend his title against... against uh, Robert Guerrero, okay? It is what it is. But he was undefeated at Super Featherweight, even though his resume is not very impressive at Super Featherweight. Edwin Valero. Edwin Valero is another undefeated Super Featherweight champion. His career at Super Featherweight is somewhat impressive in terms of knockouts, but in terms of level of opposition, again, there's not really anyone here that we actually know, even though he defended his title four times and basically had five championship fights. He beat a fighter from Panama named Vincent Mosquera, okay? And that guy was the world champion. We never heard of him anymore because probably he only had, I think, one fight and this was his first defense and he lost it, right? He was knocked out. That's the sensational thing about Valero. And after that, he had a number of other Asian fighters, and none of these fighters we really know to any extent. So, again, he was undefeated at Super Featherweight, but again, the level of opposition is much to be desired. We don't really know who they are. Asselino Freitas, on the other hand, he was quite a remarkable Super Featherweight for a number of reasons, and we'll go into that in a minute. Now, he had a number of super featherweight fights, and his whole career initially was at super featherweight, even though he fought at lightweight, and then he came down to super featherweight. He was a rather big guy. But he beat a really good super featherweight in Anatoly Alexandrov, who was super featherweight champion, and he had been super featherweight champion and defended his title for a while. Other notable names that he beat were Javier Haragui, who was a super featherweight champion, and also, he managed to defeat uh, Joel Casimir, who was the WPA Super World Super Featherweight Champion. He was a super champion. Casimir had beaten a number of names at Super Featherweight and defended his title as well. So, this really gives him his reputation. Three noteworthy names. And he had a number of Super Featherweight uh, championship fights, as you can see. He had championship fights from uh, 1999 all the way up to 2003. Okay. And uh, he had a bunch of fights, actually. 21 to... What is it? 39? What is it? Uh... 34. That's about 13 championship fights, 13 to 14 championship fights he had. So, you know, his resume looks a lot more impressive than all of the fighters we just mentioned before. And he actually fought some names. Alright? Three names to be precise. Now, Joey Kamash, he was also a super featherweight world champion. Joey Kamash would go up and down in weight. He was really one of those interesting fighters. So he fought, as you can see here, he fought at welterweight, he fought at junior welterweight, he fought at lightweight, 
and then he fought at super featherweight you go back up but in terms of his super featherweight fights he was undefeated at super featherweight okay he won the vacant WBA super featherweight title from a guy called Jerry uh, Gobini okay and basically that was it for him and super featherweight okay no real remarkable names that he beat either but he was undefeated at super featherweight Oscar De La Hoya began his career at super featherweight he beat a, a fighter named Jimmy Bredow for the vacant uh, super featherweight title WBO actually I'm, I'm wrong Jimmy Bredow actually fully uh, beat another fighter to become the WBO super featherweight champion so I'm wrong about that so that was one of the people he beat at super featherweight he only had two super featherweight fights uh, at that at, at championship fights that is and most of his fights as you can see he was at lightweight so he really came down to super featherweight to fight these two guys to get a title he got his title defended it and then he moved up to lightweight so uh, nobody really remembers Jimmy Bredow <laughs> because I think in his first defense he lost his title to Oscar De La Hoya but you know it is what it is okay he had a remarkable career at other weight classes but in terms of super featherweight career it wasn't you know it wasn't the most sterling so the only guy so far we know that had a, a reasonably remarkable super featherweight career is Asselino Freitas yeah Hector Camacho Hector Camacho at super featherweight um, he fought the likes of the following people, okay? So he, at Super Featherweight, won the title against Rafael Limon. Rafael Limon was a world champion. I believe he was Featherweight world champion or something like that. But uh, yeah, he wasn't world champion at the time that Hector Camacho faced him. But he was a, a, great, a good Super Featherweight world champion. And he was also, I believe, a good Featherweight world champion, okay? So that was the solid name he had. And he, like Oscar De La Hoya, he only had two super featherweight fights, uh, championship fights, that is. Uh, he fought a super featherweight before. And as a result of that, um, the only notable name there is Rafael Lehman. He didn't really have a great super featherweight career either. Alexis Aguero, on the other hand, had a good super featherweight career. Like Asselino Freitas. Uh, his super featherweight career was pretty long. Not as long as Asselino Freitas' is long, but it was it was long. And though he had a loss in between, it wasn't that super featherweight, it was that lightweight, right? A little bit above lightweight. He beat Alfredo Escalera. Alfredo Escalera was a world champion who had beaten uh, Nagashi, y Yagashi Nakamoto, I believe it was, right? who was a super featherweight world champion as well. Um, so he beat Alfredo Escalera, who was a good Puerto Rican fighter. And then he also beat, um, he beat up Alfredo Escalera actually twice. He beat also Rafael Lehman, who was another big name, and Bobby Chacon he also beat who is another great fighter alright so all these fighters he beat at super featherweight three notable names now the super featherweight fights weren't as much as say uh, Asselino Freitas or uh, uh, other one other fighter I, I mentioned which I can't remember who it is now <laughs> it's just crazy how I forget the names Asselino Freitas at least but at the same time again the quality of opposition was pretty much on par with that uh, he is of course a legendary fighter and he had a legendary career at super featherweight so if you look at the names I just mentioned Alfredo Escalera uh, Rafael Limon and Bobby Chacon those are some pretty decent names right there okay and uh, basically he had what looks to me like uh, he had uh, nine 
championship fights at super featherweight. And of those nine championship fights, or eight, I think it's eight championship fights, uh, he had three noteworthy ones that you really should pay attention to. Julio Cesar Chavez, on the other hand, he really had a pretty good super featherweight career, okay? The names that he fought at super featherweight, and I'm talking about at, at, at you know, the championship level, really are good names. He, he beat Roger Mayweather, who would later become a uh, super featherweight champion himself. He also beat uh, Rocky Lockridge, who became a super featherweight champion, was, I think, a super featherweight champion as well. And Juan Laporte, who was also a super featherweight champion. All right, so those were the three names that were outstanding. At super featherweight, he had... Twelve, I believe it's twelve, super featherweight championship. Oh, twelve super featherweight uh, fights while he was world champion. Twelve of them. So it's pretty impressive, uh, if you ask me. Um, then you have Floyd Mayweather Jr. Okay. Floyd Mayweather Jr. Uh, so yeah, Asselino Freitas, who had I think eight championship fights, three notable names. You had. Uh, Julio Cesar Chavez, three notable names, really solid names, and I think it's 12 championship fights. You have Asselino Freitas, who had, uh, we said, 17 championship fights, if I'm not mistaken, 17 uh, fights while he was world champion. He had three notable names. All right, so when you look at it, these these guys have some some pretty pretty good resumes there. Okay. Now, let's look at the next person, which would be Floyd Mayweather. Floyd Mayweather Jr. also fought at Super Featherweight. He was undefeated. Uh, faced Gennaro Hernandez, a long-reigning Super Featherweight champion. Uh, the other noteworthy name that you should look at is Diego Corrales, who was a beast at Super Featherweight. was born over everybody. Carlos Hernandez, who later became a world champion. And Jesus Chavez, who became a world champion two-time uh, as well. So, at the end of the day, he faced four really good names uh, and two really spectacular names of those four, right? And he had what looks to me like uh, ten championship fights, right? Ten um, or nine, I think it was nine of them. So, when you look at that, his super featherweight career is, is probably one of the top ones in terms of the undefeated uh, super featherweight careers that we're looking at. In Julio Cesar Chavez, uh, we had Floyd Mayweather, who had four names. Um, we had Asselino Freitas, and then we had Alexis Aguayo. All right. Now, some other undefeated super featherweights are Juan Guzman. Juan Guzman's super featherweight career was also pretty good, uh, though pretty short. He basically beat Jorge Rodrigo Barrios. And that's probably the only notable name in addition to Umberto Soto. So he had three Super Featherweight Championship fights. And he was able to defeat, um, I think you can include Javier Haragui. So it's, it's actually pretty decent. He has four notable names. He has Javier Haragui, Jorge Rodrigo Barrios, even though he was a world champion at the time, and Umberto Soto. All right, and that's Joan Guzman. And then we have Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner didn't beat nobody of note at Super Featherweight. He won a vacant WBO Super Featherweight title and basically was out of Super Featherweight after he faced Vincent Escobedo and beat him. But none of those guys are really uh, notable names. And then you have Ricky Burns. Ricky Burns at Super Featherweight. He uh, won the super featherweight title from Roman Martinez, who, I, you know, up to recently was a super featherweight world champion. And that's basically, he had about four fights, I think it is, at super featherweight and defended his title against names which are not really, not really no names, okay? 
So at the end of the day, the top super featherweights in the world that we should really pay attention to, that we're undefeated super featherweights, were the following names. Floyd Mayweather, Julio Cesar Chavez, Alexis Aguayo, and Asselino Freitas, okay? And so, you know, there are two very important points I want to make about this, but I will summarize that in the next video. So, on that note, I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, Floyd has the most super featherweight uh, names which actually accomplished something. Then, next would be, uh, but he had uh, just a moderate amount of fights. I think it was nine of them, or eight. Uh, Alexis Aguayo, he had eight as well, and he also had, he had three notable names. Julio Cesar Chavez had three notable names, and he had 12 fights at Super Featherweight. But the guy who really had the most amount of fights, even though he had only three notable names, is Asselino Freitas. Right? Asselino Freitas had uh, some notable names. He also had a unification bout between himself and, I believe it was, um, a, the Cuban fighter, which Joel Casameo. So, at the end of the day, you know, you look at Asselino's record, you look at Floyd's record. I think Floyd, in terms of quality, he has, again, numeracy. He has the numeracy for amount of fights. You know, when you look at that, it's really comparing him, Asselino Freitas, uh, you're, you're comparing him, Asselino Freitas, Alexis Aguayo, and uh, Julio Cesar Chavez. So, at the end of the day, when you're looking at the most dominant super featherweights in the world, Floyd's in there with these four guys. Now, there's a number of super featherweights, like I said before, who are undefeated, uh, had undefeated careers, and these are really special people. And this is throughout the history of boxing we're talking about, from when we had a super featherweight uh, division, right? We're talking about guys, we're talking about these guys are... Um, in the rare, where the air is rare, you know, guys like, uh, um, um, you know, uh, the guy who beat Willie Pep, uh, Sammy Sadler, right? Sammy Sadler would have been in this category as well if he hadn't been beaten by uh, um, Flash Elord. Flash Elord was a remarkable Filipino super featherweight fighter um, but it just so happened Flash Elard beat him in his super featherweight career not not in championship fights not in championship fights he was undefeated but in between uh, those championship fights he fought a super featherweight fight and Flash Elard beat him otherwise we would be talking about Sammy Sadler right now too in this rare list of super featherweights you know um, so I just wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, you guys have a great one.